What's going on people? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another episode of Unpopular Opinions. This is the show where you lot leave your unpopular opinions either down in the comment section below or on Twitter and we just sit back and react to them. We've had a vid we've already done one episode. If you guys haven't checked it out, check it out already. There is a link down in the description below. And yeah, international break has been a bit dead for content, so I just put a little tweet out saying, let me know you guys' unpopular opinions about Chelsea, whatever they may be, and we're going to talk about them in this video. And as usual, you guys smashed it. There was plenty of opinions to go through. So many, we couldn't even fit them all into one episode, so we're doing this episode as well. And yeah, guys, check it out, and let's get straight into the video. But before we go straight into the video, if you haven't done so already, smash that like button and hit the subscribe button as well and press the bell notification button to make it a hat trick. Sorry for that. Now, let's go straight into the video. A lot of people are saying that Hazard would have thrived in this current Chelsea team, but I actually believe it would be the opposite. We would have still been too reliant on him, which has severely limit limited the individual qualities that Pulisic, Havertz, and Ziyech have. I don't agree with this one. I think we were heavily reliant on him before our new signings came in and I think that 1920 season was a good season to try and get away from playing around Eden Hazard and having other players to start taking more responsibility for themselves. But the one problem with when Eden Hazard was here and in my opinion the main reason why he left was because there weren't these sorts of players around him like Ziyech, like Havertz, like Werner. We had players like Barkley and Willian and Morata and Batshuayi and other just bummy players. I mean, I'm not surprised that we had to rely on Eden Hazard. The other players that we had around him were just trash. Eden Hazard wanted better players around him and I'm sure I put my hand on my heart. If we had got better players in 16-17, 17-18, 18-19, well, actually I'll count 16-17 out because that was a pretty decent window. If we got better players in the two windows afterwards, Eden Hazard would still be a Chelsea player now. He, he went to go to Madrid because it was his dream and everything, but he was still happy to stay at Chelsea. If he really wanted to go to Madrid, I've always said this, he doesn't go at 28 years old. He he goes at 25 or he goes at 24. He would have stayed at Chelsea. He would have lasted the distance. It's just we did not look like a serious club at the end of 1819. We just looked like Eden Hazard FC. He wants to go and win the big trophies. He wants to compete for the Champions League regularly. We were not offering that. So that's why he left. I think with players like Pulisic, Havertz and Ziyech around him, do you know the madness that we would create? And he would still be the best player out of the lot. Nah, sorry bro, sorry bro, I rate you, I don't agree with this opinion. Eden Hazard, with the team that we have right now, wins the Premier League. Hand on heart, call it now. Pedro went through his Chelsea career with no praise, incredibly disrespected in my opinion. That is a lie. 16-17 Pedro was an absolute demon and no one, no one disputes that. If you want to go by a season by season basis with him, 15-16, it was okay in the second half of the season. First half of the season, you, you just petered out with like half of the other Chelsea squad at that point. Like you said, 16-17 was where he really is remembered for. Key goals in key moments all over the pitch. Work rate at 150. He was excellent that season all over the field. And yeah, if I'm remembering for anything, it's that sort of season. And it was a slow decline from 16, 17, 17, 18. He still popped up with some key goals, but he was starting to decline more. He wasn't the same sort of player. And even with the team disappearing as well, he was one of the players that had a disappearing act as well. 18, 19, couple of key goals in the Europa League as well. But that's where you usually saw the most out of him. League games, I think we were preferring William for the most part. Uh, yeah, I think we were. Start of the season, it was Pedro, but then it was mostly becoming more Hazard and William linking up to together. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's the case. And last season as well, Pedro was just more around for experience, but other than that, you didn't really see him around the pitch much. I don't think he's disrespected. Everyone loves his time at, Chel at Chelsea. Everyone thinks he was an incredible servant for the club. Uh, do I think he came a couple years too late? Maybe. Maybe, and I think if he was here for a few more years, he would have stamped down a bit more of a legacy. I'll be real, when people speak about Pedro, they're most likely only going to be speaking about 16-17. Maybe a bit of 18-19 as well, but that's about it. But the best you saw of Pedro was just for that one season. So maybe he's not disrespected, it's just you didn't really see his peak for long enough for there to be enough memories to talk about. But I wouldn't say disrespect. Reese James is better than Wan-Bissaka. Oh, is that a United, Avi? 
Ah, oh, yes, I love this. The humility of United fans after getting spanked over the last few weeks. This one's a short one because, yes, Reese James is better than Wan Bissaka. I don't really need to sit here and debate it. Wan Bissaka's a quality right back. I'm not going to sit here and slate him either. One of the best 1v1 defenders in the league still. But Reese James is better, and Reese James offers a lot more. He's a lot more versatile. He can actually offer something going forwards, which Wambasaka doesn't. Whereas Reese James probably has one of the best crossings crosses in the team. Did have the best cross in the team until Hacking ZH signed, but he's still up there. But yeah, Reese James over Wambasaka any day of the week. Do you consider John Obi Mikel a Chelsea legend or just a great? Cult hero. I mean, to be fair, everyone in that Munich final team has to be up there. But he's a cult hero. Um, I didn't really have them a lot of game time for long periods, so I can't really call him a legend. He's definitely a cult hero. Just I remember he used to get the ball and everyone used to just shout, shoot. It's Vin I don't know, there's a limited amount of people who have been able to say that they've seen a John Obi Mikel goal live. Me, I was very lucky to see it. Sporting Lisbon, 3-1 win in the sixth game of the group stage, 14-15. One of the most pointless Champions League games in our existence because we were already guaranteed group winners. But hey, Mikel scored, so that game meant a little bit to me. So, I don't know, I'm waffling on a little bit about it. But yeah, John Obi Mikel, cult hero, massive cult hero. Kovacic gets in every team in the Prem. I, run, I want to run an agenda here, but he's not even getting into our team right now. I will say he gets into everyone else's except for Chelsea. But right now, right now he isn't getting into our team. Not saying let's sell him or anything like that. Not saying he's washed or anything like that. He's our player of the season for a reason. But yeah, he is a quality player. Even though I said in earlier on the video, jack of all trades, master of none except for dribbling. But yeah, he does get into a lot of teams into the Premier League. I'd say any team I don't think he gets into. <sighs> I don't know. I don't think so, really. I think he go I think he can go into the City team now. Silver's gone. I think he definitely goes into that Liverpool side with the way they enjoy their presses. Um yeah, walks into every team in the Premier League. Except for ours right now, but it is what it is. Reese James should be our de our defensive mid. Now, I've heard a, I've heard a couple shouts for this, and he has played in that position for Wigan before, and it has worked out well for him. I do think he has the qualities to play in that role, <coughs> and if we have a couple of injuries, I think it would be good to play him in that position as well because we are lacking natural DMs or players that are going to sit deep in front of that back four and have the patience to stay there. I wouldn't put him there outright. I still want, would stick with the Jorginho and Kante pivot for, for right now. But Reese James at DM is not really the worst of things. I'd back that. Giroud over Abraham. Right now, I would say that. I think based on performances throughout the season, I think Tammy just edges it based on performance. Based on overall quality, though, I still say Olivier Giroud. He offers a lot more. He's got a much, uh, much wider range of abilities. And like I said, he can bring other players into the game and get the best out of them a lot more. Tammy Abraham, you started seeing more of that in his game this season. Like, you've got to talk about the link up with Kai Havertz, especially for the hat trick as well against Barnsley. It is Barnsley. I am holding Barnsley tax accountable for that one. But he does look like he's taken on his role a bit more. He looks like he's learned a bit more from Olivier Giroud. Little things from last season, like the sorts of runs he was making off the ball that were very similar to sort of runs you see Olivier Giroud making as well. I think Abraham will eventually eclipse Olivier Giroud. Not even as a disrespect to Drew because he's a quality striker and he's about to break Thierry Henry's record as all-time leading French goal scorer, which I can't wait because we're going to start Drew Henry prop. This is for all the months of Drogba slander after he terrorised your club. I'm going to enjoy this. But yeah, Giroud over Abraham right now, yes, still. In the right position, in the right setup, you get the best out of Olivier Giroud, you get the best out of two or three other players around him as well. So yeah, Giroud over Abraham. Unpopular opinion on paper, Chelsea has the best attack in the league. Again, debatable. I don't really know whether to agree too much. It's up there. The bias in me says that, but you can also throw another a couple few attacks in there. Manchester City has to be there for one. Liverpool as well. Spurs with Bale as well. I think they go up there. I think Chelsea have a better attack than Spurs. Manchester City maybe? I don't know if I can push that one. Arsenal and Spurs definitely. Manchester United definitely as well. Liverpool, Man City. I'd say more better than Man City compared to better than Liverpool. But in time it will be better than Liverpool as well. Rudiger deserves another shot. 
I mean, he'll get another shot. Uh, he said he wanted to stay at Chelsea and fight for his place because he thought that would be, make him more endeared to the Chelsea fans compared to going on loan to Spurs for another year. And I feel like Frank Lampard will appreciate that, so he will get that other shot. But I don't know if he's going to make up for it. I mean, do you remember last season? We were all saying, just wait till Rudiger comes back and we have the experience and we have the leadership that we need in our back line. He came and he was worse than everybody else. Now, I'm not going to say he's going to come back and do the exact same thing, but I want to see it to believe it. I don't think, I don't think it's going to be outright that he's going to come back and walk straight into the squad. He will get another shot, though. So, to end that question, he deserves another shot. Yeah does use the word deserves very loosely but he will get another shot mason mount is a top guy and a tidy player for someone his age it's lampard's decision to play him out of position to accommodate another player that causes unwarranted hate towards him so lampard should fix up rather than mount i agree with what you're saying that him playing out of position is the reason why he hasn't looked as good it's not necessarily Lampard's fault though, it's because of, I think it's because of Ziyech and what's his name, Pulisic's injuries. You've had to play Timo Werner on the left and you've had to play Mount on the right to accommodate. I would have rather see us do a little switch because Timo Werner on the left, you don't really get to cut inside because it's too predictable. Whereas if you play him on the right hand side, he can still use his pace to burn through defenders or burn past full fullbacks. But then he can try and whip in across to someone like Olivier Giroud and Tammy Abraham. And with that extra gust of pace, I'm expecting that hopefully he'll be able to beat players and have a more clearer room of space for a, sh for a cross. And then hopefully he ends up getting on the head of somebody. I think that's a lot, that's a much better idea compared to him just coming in off the left and trying to cut inside because we're dealing with teams that most of them just sit deep behind us and put 10 or 11 men behind the ball. He's not really getting the room to turn onto his favoured right foot and I feel like that's where he's struggling a little bit. But in the case of Mason Mount, because I've kind of gone a bit off topic, it's not Lampard's fault. I think you're going to see Mason Mount in more natural positions now that, now that we've got Ziyech and Pulisic back from injury. But I wouldn't really worry too much about it. But guys, that is the end of Unpopular Opinions for you today. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of the opinions or any of my opinions down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care and up the chels.